Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at recreating the effect that you see in the TikTok logo here in Adobe Illustrator. Before we start, let's have a look and see what we're trying to do. So I have the TikTok logo here. You'll see that it appears in two colors. It's black and it's white. They use white when it's on a black background and they use black here when it's on a white background. So we're going to create an effect that can be used in either black or white. It's also going to be fully editable and it's going to be able to be saved for reuse. So let's swing back to Illustrator where I have a document already created. This is 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels, but your document can be whatever size you like. You're going to go to the type tool. I'm using Myriad Pro, about 400 points for this size document. Use whatever font you like, whatever character you like, whatever size you like. I'm just going to type the letter T inside the document. Now, at this point, what happens is going to depend a little bit on what you do next. It doesn't matter right now what color your text is. I've just selected it with the selection tool. I'm going to the Appearance panel by choosing Window and then Appearance. Now, my Appearance panel looks like this, but yours might look like this. You may have the actual fill appearing in the Appearance panel. That's just fine because that's like the actual fact where we want to be right now. So if yours looks like this, you're just going to double click on Characters because you want to see this. And what you're going to do is you're going to remove any fill or any stroke. So you want nothing as the fill and as the stroke. So you shouldn't see anything here at all. Now we're going to go back to type no appearance. And right now we should see nothing again because our type has got no fill and no stroke exactly as we want it to be. The reason why we're using this area of the appearance panel is that these options here are available. Inside the characters area, they're grayed out. So we can't add multiple fills to our type and we need to add multiple fills. We need a cyan fill and we need a red fill. So I'm gonna click here on add new fill. I'm going to choose something that looks a little bit like cyan, a sort of bluey color. I'm going to double check it by double clicking it on it over here and just see if it is cyan. Well, mine is cyan. Cyan has zero in the red channel and 255 in the green and in the blue channel. So zero, 255 in green, 255 in blue. You want to set yours to that if it's not already at that and click OK. So this is the cyan part of the logo. We need a red bit. So I'm going to click here on the add new fill option. Now the fill appears to be added underneath. It doesn't matter. We're just going to go back and change this topmost one because we can see it. So I'm going to click the drop down list here and choose something that looks a bit like red. I'm going to double click on the color and check and see if it's red. Now this is not pure red. Pure red is 255 in the red channel, zero in the green and blue channels. So I'm setting it up to red and I'm clicking OK. Right now, we can't see the cyan. It's here, but because the red T is immediately on top of the cyan T, it's blocking it from being seen. So what we're going to do is move this red T. At this point, you want to be targeting the red option here. You'll see that there's a little blue highlight that moves around with you or colored highlight. And you want to make sure that you've highlighted this red fill. I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. And we're going to kick this red character over to the right. Because you'll see here that the red is on the right, the cyan is on the left. So we're going to adjust its horizontal positioning. Now, how far you go is just going to be dependent on the size font you're using and the size document. So I'm thinking about 10 pixels in either direction. And that's dropping the red both down and to the right. So I've dropped it down and to the right. So I'm just going to click OK. So we've got the red and the blue offset from each other, but we don't have the black. But that's pretty easy to achieve. With our text still selected and with the appearance panel open, you're going to notice that if I open this fill up, you've got an opacity for this fill, you've got an opacity here for this fill, and you've got an opacity for the overall shape. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the opacity setting for the red fill. We're just going to click on this here. And these here are blend modes. At the moment, it's set to normal. We're going to set it to multiply. And what 
that's doing is it's darkening where these two colors are overlapping. So where the red and the cyan overlap each other, then we're getting this darker look. Now at this point, you can make a decision. You can leave the offsets as they are here, or you could change the offset. So you could go back into the red, double click the transform option here, and you could wind back any of these settings. So if you would prefer to see something a little bit more like this, where the colors are just moved to the side, you can do that. You're in, totally in charge of this. I happen to prefer this look a little bit better without the sort of extra edge that you get when you drop it down. So you make that choice. I'm going to leave mine at zero. So I'm just going to offset the red and the blue this way. I'm going to click OK. So right now we've got an element of type that looks really good on a white background. So if we wanted it to be on a black background, let's just see how we're going to achieve that. First of all, I'm going to make something that is filled with black. Black is 0, 0, 0 in the red, green and blue channels. And I'm going to move it behind everything with Object Arrange and Send to Back. Now, our type isn't very visible right now for a number of reasons, and this is going to be crucial to what we're doing. Firstly, we don't have white, but we've also lost the red and we're sort of losing bits of the cyan as well. The reason for this is that this blending effect that we've got, this multiply blend mode, is not only impacting the character, but it's also impacting the character's relationship with the black box underneath. So we need to stop this behavior or we don't have an effect. And the way we stop this behavior is by selecting the text, going down to this opacity, the one at the very bottom that controls the overall character. And here what we're going to do is choose Isolate Blending. And what that does is it isolates the blending effect so that it only impacts where the text is actually working, where the text is the impact of these two sets of fills on top of each other rather than the piece of text with anything behind it. So we're halfway there. We've got the blending to behave better, but we still don't have white. Well, to get our white, all we have to do is come back here to this red fill go to its opacity setting and change that blend mode. Instead of multiply, we're going to use difference. And when you use difference, you get white text. So we've got now an effect and it's fully editable. I can change the font, I can change the character, I can change the font size. Everything is 100% editable. So let me just go back to here and let's make it a K. And I'll just click away from here. And here is the text effect applied to a totally different letter. Now, I want to reuse this. I want to be able to use it at any time in the future. So while I'm here, I'm going to open what's called the Graphic Styles panel. You can get to it by choosing Window and then Graphic Styles. It's here in the panel list. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this white text, the one that results in a white element in the middle, and just drag and drop it into the Graphic Styles panel. Now, let's just get rid of the black for a minute. Let's change our blend mode here back to multiply so that we get the black one in the middle. And I'm going to drag and drop that into the graphic styles panel. So now I've got those saved as graphic styles. I can delete my character. I can come back in and type something different. In this case, I'm going to type ABC. I'm going to select that type with the selection tool. I'm going to click here on this graphic style and immediately it's applied to the text. It's also fully editable. So if at this point we think that we'd like to change that offset, all we have to do is click on the transform option here and we could add a slightly different offset. It's totally editable as an effect. And if you like that better, you can of course save that as a graphic style. So you can just work out what looks best for the text that you're working with. But again, totally editable. Now, if you want to use these graphic styles in future, you're going to need to save them because right now they're only saved in this document when we save the document. So I'm going to click on the drop down list here, this little fly out in the top corner of the panel, and I would choose Save Graphic Style Library. So I'm just going to call this TikTok as the TikTok styles, and I'll click Save. So that would be available in a new Illustrator document. So let's just go and create a brand new Illustrator document. 
see in the graphic styles panel that those TikTok styles are not available. Well, we're going to go to the flyout menu, open graphic style library, go down to user defined, and here is our TikTok style. So now I can go in and create some type. Let's change the font this time. Let's use something different. Just click to apply the TikTok style to the type. For this particular font, I would need to stretch the characters out if I don't want this overlap between them. I'm going to the character panel and I'm going to increase the spacing between the characters. I'm just going to push them out of the way so I don't get that overlap. So there you have the basics of creating that TikTok text effect in Adobe Illustrator fully editable text effect. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel.